Dissented Gulam Nabi Azad's resignation from an all-party position has landed as a blow on Congress's face. While Azad wrote a scathing letter to interim party president Sonia Gandhi and rain fire on Rahul Gandhi, essentially blaming him for the party's demise, party leaders such as Dig Vijay Singh and Jairam Ramesh lashed out at Azad, calling him a traitor. Azad in his letter claimed that all senior and experienced leaders were sidelined and a new coterie of inexperienced sycophants ran the party. A day before Azad's resignation, leader Jaivi Shergill too had quit the party. Now with one more G23 leader gone, will others follow suit? My colleague Maria Shakil spoke to G23 member Prithvi Rachavan and senior Congress leader Salman Khurshid about Azad's resignation. Listen in to what they said. Uh, Prithvi Rachavan, uh, he was a member of G23 and as a member of G23, this, did this resignation of Mr. Azad come as a surprise to you? Well, I am personally pained. It's very unfortunate. Uh, we had got together a couple of years back. Uh, we introspected about the affairs of the Congress party, the repeated defeats uh, in both Lok Sabha elections and almost after uh, Lok Sabha election, almost 40 assembly elections we won. Whatever elections we, we got elected in, uh, we lost 40 elections, but some elections we won, and there also we could not form the government like in Goa. So we were all concerned about happening in the Congress party. It was a consensus in that group uh, with few people, the media called G23. It was just 23 of us, senior members, former union ministers, former working committee members, former chief ministers, we wrote a letter because we could not get a personal appointment for over a month. She was not well. There was COVID. And we could understand that. And so we thought at least the leadership should know what we feel. We're all senior members. And so we wrote a letter, which was supposed to be a confidential letter. But unfortunately, somebody leaked it. And then we branded as rebels and asking questions and all that thing. All we had asked was three simple things. The Congress party should be led by somebody full-time. That secondly, there should be introspection while we lost, and that there should be elections to the all organs of the Congress party as per the Congress constitution. Uh, a couple of months, uh, I mean, four or five months later, Mrs. Gandhi did give us an audience. We had a final round meeting. And so by and large, agreed with all of whatever we had said. That yes, there will be elections to the Congress party. Yes, there will be Chintan Shibir, and uh, there will be more frequent meetings, which didn't happen. But both the promises she fulfilled, there was a Chintan Shibir, there was a Shibir, and uh, the elections are on. Unfortunately, the Shibir uh, got turned from a Chintan Shibir to a Navasankalpa Shibir. So if you're going to accuse Mr. Modi of being dictatorial, that he's uh, ushered in a police state, there's undeclared emergency, then can we, do we have a right to accuse him of dictatorship? Our own party is not functioning democratically. Mr. Khurshid, uh, has Gulam Nabi Azad shown mirror to the Congress or has he betrayed the party? Because the jury is divided. Many think that uh, the tone and tenor of the letter is almost similar to what other leaders have said in the past. And those who are presently in the Congress, they are saying that this is betrayal. You know, I just, I just wonder, this is, this is like people living a full life. Uh, and then somebody you've known uh, all your life uh, happens to pass away uh, upon the demise. Uh, you don't think of being the next and you don't think of how things will be when you pass away, etc. But that's how life is, that people line up, you reach a, you, you, you reach a top and then you slide down or just uh, generally fade away. These things happen. And when uh, these are all... Uh, exaggerated and escalated by events uh, which are adverse events that are going against the interests and the success of your organization and your party then these all these things get amplified and uh, and i think we just have to take them in our stride it's deeply disappointing this deeply disappointing somebody that you worked with for such a long time uh, takes such a decision I would be in a better position to talk about it if any one of them who've left had actually discussed it with me or with some of us. But this wasn't discussed. It became like a monopoly, an exclusive club uh, where the people who felt let down, um, about whom many people would have felt let down in the past, uh, decided to just walk away. 
I don't think that was necessary, but I, I think it became inevitable because of circumstances. Now to dwell upon that and to, to uh, you know, rip things apart and say things which are unpleasant, et cetera, may just not be the occasion. I don't think it helps anybody for us to do that. It's deeply disappointing, obviously deeply disappointing. And to an extent for me to say it doesn't matter would be wrong. It matters, it matters, but we have to go on. We have to move on and put our act together and, and then work for the tomorrow and the day after and the day after that.